Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of well, this time we'll call it Japan Country Life. Now, it's been a, almost a year since the, I started this series. There was a big gap over winter um, when I just didn't get around to making any videos. But upon looking at what has been done, um, I have noticed that the, the video on these coffee makers actually was the most popular of the lot. So I thought um, making a continuing series on unusual Japan coffee makers would, uh, would be in order. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's talk about coffee makers again. Uh, now we, this one was uh, generated a lot of interest, this particular model, the, uh, the, the um, Atomic. Uh, we've done with that. We have, uh, we have other models to look at. And so today we'll, we will going, be going on to um, siphon coffee makers. Uh, as most of you will, almost all of you will know, this is a siphon coffee maker. They've been around since the 1920s um, and they're not as popular as they were simply because they they quite a lot of time and trouble to make a single cup of coffee with one of these. You have, uh, there's a lot of cleaning involved um, and washing up to put it away. But they still do make very nice coffee and they're very nice to look at. Now, um, rather than just show you an ordinary run-of-the-mill model like this, which you've probably all seen before, I'll show you a unique Japan model, which probably none of you have seen. And it's this one. A single cup model. Just the thing for, for camping, um, or when you're alone. The perfect uh, singular selfish man's coffee machine. Um, this particular model, uh, as far as I know, was only made in Japan. And the, the one sitting on the, the table right here was made in the 1970s. Uh, I don't think they make it anymore. So this particular model I found by accident uh, while on a cycling trip. Uh, during my cycling trips, I always, if I find a, a, a country town, I always explore the, the town and the shops and see what's on offer. And there was an old, old shop with lots of old uh, glass in it, selling old glasses. And uh, in the showcase was this, was this thing. So, of course, I just had to have it. Um, so they made them in the 1970s. And I don't think they were ex exported out of Japan. I've never seen one out of, outside of Japan, although I haven't been that, outside of Japan that much myself. But anyway, let's fire it up and try it out. I actually haven't tried this out for, uh, for quite a while, so I actually did it a um, a pre-run um, and heated up the water uh, previously. We'll just pour some of that in there. That wasn't supposed to happen. That, that's the uh, that is the dehumidifier. Anyway, let's put in some coffee. I hope this is going to work because this is the the very very fine grind. Uh, powder, which I usually use for for the atomic. So I hope this works um, for the for the siphon. So now we just sit back and wait. This is all part of the fun of country living and having cycling as a hobby. You come across things in the countryside, um, you come across things in your house, you come across things in other people's houses. Um, unusual Japan only things, uh, which are very just cool, just cool. Uh, for example, this came out of the Kura the other day. Now, I want you to do a close up of this. I'm going to show you the bottom of it and you'll be surprised when you see the bottom. Looks brand new, right? 1923 model. Never used. So I have a set of these. Uh, it's starting to bubble up now. Now you can see it's starting to come the uh, the steam is pushing that up there and it's starting to mix up here. Mm. 
Mmm, smells good. Right, that's enough. I think that's all you need to do. Let it bubble a little bit. Give it a stir. And wait for it to go back down again. Because this is so small, it's actually much quicker. Bigger models, provided you don't run out of fuel, that is. And that has actually worked. I thought the powder coffee might get blocked or something. But that has, uh, that's a good color. Now what we do now is we take, take this top off altogether, like that. We'll just put that in there for the moment. I'm a milk first man, not a milk after man. That goes for tea as well. Why do you put the milk in first? Well, because the uh, putting in the, uh, the actual tea or coffee afterwards, because it mixes it up. Oh, that's a very rich cup of coffee, that is. So let me try that. It's the first time in a couple of years I've used this. Not bad, not bad. Slightly tainted because of the, uh, the filters in these things. Uh, you, wa you wash and use again and again. And if, um, of course, just sitting around for months and months and months, it, gets, it tends to get tainted. But upon the second cup, or the third cup made by this thing, I think that, that will go. So at, at the moment, it's just at the not bad stage. I wouldn't call it brilliant. But still, it is genuine good rich coffee, which you can have anywhere with something this small. You can put it in your backpack. Um, the only thing is that if you're using outside, you, need, you do need somewhere to, to protect it from the wind. So there you have it, today's coffee maker. Very nifty indeed. Oh, by the way, I might as well mention the brand of this thing. If you ever can track it down, I think it's called, it is called, it is called Hario. That's H-A-R-I-O. Now Hario is a company which is still in business now. They mainly make test tubes and, and um, laboratory equipment, but they also make coffee makers. I think they still make these, this size. In fact, this is a Hario. It's written on it. They're both made by the same company. That's Hario. You can look on the internet today. I don't know if they still make this one. Hario.